What's up guys? Welcome back to another virtual job shadow here on the channel. The last virtual job shadow I put out on how to shoot interviews got a lot of good feedback and I think you guys really like that one. So today we're gonna do another virtual job shadow that goes over my process of how I cut and how I piece together interviews. So these interviews that we're gonna be working with here today is going to be the same interviews that we shot in the last virtual job shadow. So if you haven't seen the last one, there's a link up here and you can go watch that and then maybe come back or just go watch that at the end. But today we're gonna to be going over my process of how I cut my interviews and kind of the process I go through. So let's not take up any more time. Let's hop right into the computer here and go over how I cut these interviews. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do here is obviously pull up your project file. I use Final Cut Pro. So that's mainly what we're gonna be talking about today is Final Cut Pro, but pull up your editing software. I already have my project files ready to go here. So we're just gonna be going under the interview timeline and you can see down here, it is empty. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do for interviews is sync them up and put them into a multi-cam track, I guess you could call it. Now I'm gonna go under footage here because this is how I always organize my files, uh, project files, footage, assets, music, and then anything behind the scenes. So right away, you can see here, we have five different interviews with five different students. The first step we're gonna take here is to sync up these files. So I have each student in a different folder here. So Becca, Chase, Koi, Jada, and Jessica, and their respective footage from their interview is in their keyword collection here. So let's start with Becca. She has a zoom track here, which is capturing all of her audio through the external mic. She has her wide shot here, and then she has the second camera angle here split into two files because that's just what my B cam does. It splits it into two files after after four gigabytes. So what's super simple with putting these multi-cam clips together is you just have to select them all, which click the top one, shift click the bottom one, right click, new multi-cam clip, name it Becca Multicam Interview. If I can type here, we're gonna put that in footage. Check this, use audio for synchronization and you should be good to go. Hit okay and it syncs it up just like that. So now we have Becca's multicam clip here and you can see it's just right in the footage folder. I'll throw that down into the timeline and I have these color coded to a different color for each interviewee. So obviously Becca here is this orangish color. So now that we have Becca's done, we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the other four interviews and I will time lapse through that so you guys don't have to watch. It is the same process. So if you missed it the first time, rewind and you can watch me sync Becca's footage again. But it's time lapse over this so we have all the footage. All right, so now we have all the audio files synced up. We have all five interviews down here in the timeline. And the next step of what we're gonna do is make sure that the audio track that we recorded from our external mic, which is the Zoom H6 and the Rode NTG5, make sure that that audio is the one that's playing throughout the interview and not the onboard microphone. So how we do that is we're gonna go up here to view and we're going to hit angles and then the angles are gonna pop up here on the left. So once we click Becca, her interview clip down here in the timeline, I'll actually hide the browser. So once we click Becca's down here in the timeline, you can see her angles of the interview pop up here on the top left. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do to make sure only the zoom track is selected is hit this button right here in the middle, which is enable video only switching. So that means the audio stays on the audio track that you want it to no matter how many video clips you switch between. So we're gonna click that here in the middle and then go over here to the audio track in the inspector, pull up the audio configuration, check off the onboard microphone from the clip and then you're going to find your zoom track here at the bottom. So then I click that zoom track and as you can see over here on the left side, the zoom track lit up and is now green. When it is green, that means that is the only audio track that is gonna play throughout the interview so you don't have to worry about when you switch video clips that the audio is switching from camera to camera too. It's going to stay on that external audio. The next thing we're gonna go into is actually cutting the interview. How I cut the interview is I will go through the interview, find where I'm asking the questions, and then wait for her response after and cut out all of her answers first. That is my first step of the sifting. So let's go ahead and give you guys an example of that. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see. So play it back and listen through. I choose not to wait because it has negative effects on your body and what you do on and off the courts and on and off the course 
and sports are very important to me, so it was never a priority in my life. So right there, we can tell it starts right here at the beginning. I'm just going to hit left bracket, which trim starts. I choose not to vape because... And then I'm going to find where her answer ends, and I'm going to cut there. And sports are very important to me, so it was never a priority in my life. So in my life, stop after that, hit the blade tool, and now I'm just going to look for the next question. Some risks with vaping are lung damage. So it starts with some risks. I'm going to trim start to the left. Some risks with vaping are lung damage to your lungs, um, inflammation in your lungs, um, just any tissue breakup from crap. I, I don't see so you can see that obviously she messed up there. So we're gonna find when she starts that question over again because we're not gonna use the part where she messed up a little bit. So we're gonna go and find- I'll say something. You can kind of tell where the clip's gonna start by the audio waveforms. So when it starts to pick up bigger, that's generally when the answers or your talent is going to be talking. And when the audio waveforms are shorter, that's generally when the interview is talking because obviously the microphone is pointed at the talent. So it's gonna pick up her audio better, making those waveforms taller. There are so many risks with vaping. So obviously you can tell there, that's where it starts again. So I'll trim start. There are so many risks with vaping, especially now with modern science that has come up with more information about it. Um, it hinders your breathing. There is inflammation that is caused by it. And ultimately it affects you in your everyday life and physical activity. So her answer cuts after that. Again, I will cut here after her answer and then look for the next question. Now, as I'm going through these interviews, I kind of decide whether or not I like that answer. Now, obviously that answer is good. A lot of her points are good, but she didn't seem confident when she was giving it and sold on the points that she was telling me. So I'll just keep that in the back of my mind when I decide which parts of the interview to use that that one wasn't generally the most convincing answer for the video. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Let's move on to continuing to cut the rest of the video. That's basically the general idea of the first round of sifting. So I'll go through and I'll do that for all of the interviews and then we will move on to the next step. So we can commence another time lapse here. You guys can watch me cut through this, but it gets pretty tedious. Basically just wanna go through the interview and cut out all the portions where your talent is actually giving an answer. Because I'm not gonna put my voice, the interviewer, inside of the video so i'm just going to cut out those portions and just take all the pieces that they're actually giving an answer so let me do that quick after you have all the answers cut out the next step that i like to do is pick out my favorite answers now this is going to be all personal preference as you as a video editor as whatever the story might be so you're gonna have to decide that for yourself some things that you want to take into consideration when you're deciding which clips are good which clips are bad is what story you're trying to tell if it's super moody and dramatic which this one kind of is it's a serious topic I'm gonna pick the answers that make me feel a little bit uncomfortable a little bit emotional and not the ones that are kind of just bland and generic. So after I have all of these cut, I'll watch through all of the answers again and pick out my favorites. This video is gonna be somewhere from three to five minutes and there's five different interviews. So I'm only gonna use a couple answers from each person that was interviewed. So it really has to be my favorite answer. So I'm gonna do that super quick and then we'll go into the next step, which is going to be using the multicam tools to cut between shots. So for the sake of this video and not to waste any time on your guys end, I'm just going to pull up a couple random clips here as if I had picked these ones as my favorite. So we'll rock and roll with these four. Now what I do when I pick my favorites is I put my favorite clips on the top of the timeline that I'm working on. So how you do that in Final Cut is you hit P which gives you the position tool and then you just drag up. It leaves a gray box below. Then you know all your selected clips are on top of the timeline. The next step that I just mentioned is you're actually going to do the multi-cam cuts. So there's a couple different ways to do the multi-cam cuts. You can do it while you're actually piecing together the edit, but since I don't have any of the B-roll edited or sifted through or anything, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut just to show you guys what that process looks like. Now, what I think about when cutting these multi-cam clips is you want to cut to the tight shot or your B-cam or C-cam, however many shots you have, you want to cut to that shot when either A, it's a really dramatic point and you want to get in tighter to make the audience focus on what your interviewee is saying, or B, you need to hide a cut. 
So say the interviewee says something like, um, and then continues her answer. That is when you would cut out the um, and right after she says the word before the um, you would cut to the tight and then skip the um. So let's see if we can find one of those examples here to show you guys. Up with more information about it. Um, it okay, so I found a clip right here that has an um in it, and I'll show you guys this example first, and then we'll go to the dramatic cut after this. So as you listen back here, listen for the um. With more information about it, um, it hinders your breathing. So you could tell right before she said it hinders your breathing, she said um, like she was searching for an answer. So what we're going to do here is the word before um. So in this case it is. Information about it. Any information about it. So right after any information about it, we're gonna cut there. We're going to hit B, blade tool I have is my shortcut. And then we're gonna go cut after the um. It hinders your, um, it So right before it hinders your, we can hit B again. If you have your keyboard shortcuts set up, you can hit trim to start and it'll cut there. But for those of you guys that don't have it, I'll just hit B. And then you're gonna wanna delete this clip here in the middle that has the um. So delete that and then you can put them together. So now if I play it back, you can tell the um is gone, but there's a little cut in between there that you can notice. So take a peek at what I'm talking about. More information about it. It hinders your breath. Did you see how there was that odd cut there for a second? How we fix that and make it look a little bit better. One, it was too quick. The answers came right after each other. So after the first clip, I'm gonna drag it out here just to give it a couple frames after some breathing room for the next sentence to start. So then once we put these together, the second clip where the cut starts is where you're gonna wanna cut to your B cam or C cam or whatever you might have. So how you do that is you just go up into this angles viewer here and you click your B cam, which in this case, it's this one right here. And now you can see it has cut to the B cam. So if we watch this back, it's going to look a little bit better and more seamless. You're not gonna be able to tell that there was an um in there to start more information about it. It hinders your breathing. So as you can see, that looks a little bit better. You can kind of tell it's a little bit quick still. So one thing you might do to fix that is give another half second before she starts to say it hinders your breathing. So you drag out this half a frame like I just did, and then let's play that back and see how that sounds. More information about it. It hinders your breathing. There is inflammation that is caused by it. So pause that. As you can see, that's way better, right? Obviously, it's still not perfect. You can do a little bit of tweaking where you crossfade the audio together a little bit and maybe you do a J cut where it cuts to the actual B cam clip as the A cam audio is rolling. That's obviously for a different video. And if you guys need that right away, just search J cuts and L cuts on YouTube, something will pop up for sure. But you can see cutting to your B cam obviously gives a way more dynamic type shot than just staying on your A cam and leaving those ums in there. So that's mainly, that's one of the reasons we use a B cam is to cover up edits like that. The second reason is to find something dramatic. So let's go over here to this shot and see if we can find anything dramatic that she might say. I feel like you have that temptation of wanting to vape and it can sometimes draw your focus. So let's let's cut it temptation. That's kind of a deep temptation word. of So we'll go in here, find where she says temptation and it's right here and we're going to cut right before it. Just click the clip and click your B cam and then the nice thing about multicam interviews and once you set up your audio to be the same track, you're good to go and play it back. I'm still playing sports. I feel like you have that temptation of wanting to vape and it can sometimes draw your focus away from what you really should be focusing on. That's more my style multicam cut is I'd rather do it when there's something dramatic or something I want the audience to focus on. That's when I like to cut to the B cam. You can obviously do it to hide cuts like I just showed you guys, but a lot of times to hide cuts and to make it feel more natural, I like to put B roll over top of those cuts. Obviously it works if you just had interview, no B roll. You can obviously do that with two different angles, but I feel like it's a little bit more seamless when you leave that breath in there. Maybe just mute the um and put B-roll over top so the spacing sounds. Pretend like you went back and forth on this I feel interview. Like you have that temptation of wanting. Cut to the tight. Give it a couple seconds. And, vape and it can sometimes draw your focus away. Cut back to the wide. It can sometimes draw your focus away from what you really should be focusing on. A lot of the times I like to do this when it's actually on the timeline. So I'll get all my ducks in a row, get all the interview questions I like, 
line them up with the b-roll and then one of my last steps would actually be to cut through and cut at their dramatic parts so that's all i have on this virtual job shadow of how i cut my interviews how i use multi-cam clips if you guys like this video please let me know please let me know if you want more virtual job shadows and i'd be happy to make them if you have a direction you want me to go with it if you want to see something more than something else i can gladly do that i'm going to try to do more virtual job shadows on set because i know those generally tend to be a little bit more fun to learn the basics of things on set rather than editing but editing is important too and when it comes to interviews it's super important thank you guys for watching if you like this video you might like the videos on this side right here where we have another virtual job shadow and then down here this is one of my best performing videos so if you want to click one of these videos i would love that and uh, hopefully you enjoy those too thank you guys for watching and i will see you when i decide to make another video